the JLR interview series. Okay, so uh, it's just after 11 a.m. on Thursday, and um, today Jazzle on the radio has a, a Skype guest with us, and uh, it's a bass player called Anna Met Iverson, and um, bass player out of Denmark, and she's recently released a new album, or CD I should say, called Race and the Butterfly. So first things first, how are you today, Anne? I'm very good. Thanks, Laurie, for having me. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I should say that Anne is based in Berlin today, so uh, it's just after midday in Berlin time. So as I say, um, you bought out a new CD called Race and the Butterfly. Now, um, we've been featuring it on Jazz on the Radio on latest releases and on Andrea Vicari's Jazz Doodles for about the last three to four months. Really enjoyed it. So I thought it would be nice to uh, get Anne on the station just to talk about her new CD and music in general. So um, it's an interesting title. So it's called Racing the Butterfly. And it's on the, now I might pronounce this correctly, the blue label, B-L-U. Uh, BJUR. So BJUR. Oh, yeah. I must be seeing things. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we misprinted. <laughs> okay, BJUR. Um, That's for Brooklyn Jazz Underground. Ah, right. Well, that that makes sense now. Yeah, that makes sense. So, um, well, the first things first is an interesting title for CD. So, um, you know, just briefly, what what's the idea behind it? Well, it's actually very literal um, mm. because because <laughs> I I was raising a butterfly so I put my arm on Oh the right! Arm. Did you win? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think so. Quite honestly. <laughs> but um, now it was you know I was I was not running I was actually on vacation in, in France at the time and it was a wonderful beautiful morning and I ran along the road and this butterfly came up next to me and stayed there for a remarkable long time and and just the title just came like as I was running I was raising a butterfly I thought it was it was a fun playful thing moment so so it kind of stuck with me okay I I should use it (laughs) yeah so I mean is that is that normal for you to come up with titles of uh, your compositions Mm -hmm. like on the hoof or was that a one off you know, I think it's it's uh, it is yeah it's not common for me to get titles like find titles easily. But yeah. but what I do find is that I sometimes get quite good ideas when I when I'm running. Okay. <laughs> and so, yeah, so go on, go ahead. No, so so that that was uh, uh, yeah. T- titles are difficult for me. Yeah. And. Um, what I was going to ask is the music. Was the music already composed, and then you just happened to on that title were, or how did yeah. it? Oh, okay. It was not composed. Oh, and, right. And I kind of, uh, you know, as I was running there, I was like trying in my head finding, you know, melodies or also ideas of of uh, that that would fit this this title and wow. sort of uh, the image of. Uh, you know, two people racing, or a person and a butterfly, or whatever. But this race between two voices somehow, wow. two identities, and so that's what I went for when I then composed the title track of the album. This, 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 uh, you know, where, where one of the 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 lead melodies, which is in the trombone, is sort of very uh, melodic and. Okay, so uh, it's just after 11 a.m. on Thursday, and um, today Jazz on the Radio has a, a Skype guest with us, and uh, it's a bass player called Anna Met Iverson, and um, bass player out of Denmark, and she's recently released a new album, or CD I should say, called Race and the Butterfly. So first things first, how are you today, Anne? I'm very good. Thanks, Laurie, for having me. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I should say that Anne is based in Berlin today, so it's just after midday in Berlin time. 
So, as I say, um, you brought out a new CD called Race and a Butterfly. Now, um, we've been featuring it on Jazz on the Radio, on latest releases, and on Andrea Vicari's Jazz Doodles for about the last three to four months. Really enjoyed it. So, I thought it would be nice to uh, get Anne on the station just to talk about her new CD and music in general. So, um, it's an interesting title. So, it's called Race and a Butterfly. And it's on the, now I might pronounce this correctly, the blue label, B-L-U? Uh, B-J-U-R. So B-J-U-R? Oh, yeah, well, I must be seeing things. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we misprinted it. <laughs> okay, B-J-U-R. Um, That's for Brooklyn Jazz Underground. Ah, right, well that, that makes sense now. Yeah, that makes sense. So, um... Well, the first things first, it's an interesting title for CD, so, um, you know, just briefly, what, what's the idea behind it? Well, it's actually very literal, um, mm. because, because <laughs> I, I was raising a butterfly, so I put my thumb on Oh, right. Butterfly. Did you win? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think so, quite <laughs> But um, now, it was, you know, I was, I was not running, I was actually on vacation in, in France at the time, and it was a wonderful, beautiful morning, and I ran along the road, and this butterfly came up next to me and stayed there for a remarkable long time, and and just the title just came, like, as I was running, I was raising a butterfly, I thought it was it was a fun, playful thing, moment, so so it kind of stuck with me. Okay. I thought, maybe I should use it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, is that, is that normal for you to come up with? Titles of uh, your compositions, like on the hoof, or was that a one-off? It, you know, I think it's it's uh, it is yeah, it's not common for me to get titles like find titles easily. But yeah. but what I do find is that I sometimes get quite good ideas when I when I'm running. Okay. <laughs> and so, yeah, so go on, go ahead. No, so so that that was. Uh, uh, yeah, T- titles are difficult for me. Yeah, and um, what I was going to ask is the music. Was the music already composed, and then you just happened to on that title or, or how did yeah. it? Oh, okay, but it was not composed. And, oh, right. And I kind of, uh, you know, as I was running there, I was like trying in my head finding, you know, melodies or also ideas of. Of uh, that that would fit this this title and wow. sort of uh, the image of uh, you know two people racing or a, a person and a butterfly or whatever, but this race between two voices somehow wow. or two identities, and so that's what I went for when I then composed the title track of the album. This 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 uh, you know where where one of the the, the lead melodies, which is in the trombone, is sort of very uh, melodic and What I want to ask you is also, uh, you, it's called Anna Meta Iverson Quartet Plus One. Right. So I assume that's a quartet and a, and a, and a guest? Yeah, so can, it's a more permanent guest now. Oh, a permanent guest. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, I had my the quartet for, 
many many years and uh, I don't know 15 years or, or, or something okay and that was with the, the guys from New York uh, from when I lived in New York mm -hmm. and and uh, some years ago we went on tour and I had written some music and I actually wanted to put another horn in in on this tour and invited the trombonist the Swedish trombonist Peter Dahlgren um, and he so he went, did the tour. He also then did the previous album, and and now he's on this album as well. So it's kind of become a, a solid constellation. Oh, good. Okay. And uh, who are the other members of your quartet? The other members are John Ellis on saxophone, mm -hmm. uh, Danny Grisette on piano, Otis Brown the third on drums, and then myself on bass. Okay. Okay. And um, so, you know, you, you said you bought out a few other CDs over the years as well under your, under your name. Yeah. Okay. And um, also, I, I noticed that you being part of the now. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. The Nor Nor. I know the band. I, Nor Button. <laughs> Big bands. Right. And you've composed music for them as well. Yeah. Wow, that, that's great. So, how did that collaboration come about? You know that. Uh, yeah, I was contacted by them. Um, I knew Peter, the, the trombonist, plays. I think it's the place in that uh, band, mm -hmm. and I think he had. You know, they had these composers in residence every year, and that's. I think he made has suggested me at some point, and then uh, one year they decided to invite me. Um, and and do it, and they contacted me, and of course I was I was happy uh, to do it, and it was really fun working with them, and it was really great because it was you know I was flown, I was I was up there four times during the year, mm -hmm. and sort of developing the music uh, through that year, and in in part with them, or in that sense that I brought in stuff that I wanted to try out and see how it worked and next time I, maybe I changed some stuff or, and you know because I didn't like it or whatever and so it was kind of a, a, a work process um, and it's quite, it's a quite, it's a luxury that you get this type of work process with a full big band where you can sort of mm -hmm. get to develop the music um, throughout uh, that, that peri a period of time and what also, what I also wanted to do with it when I did it I kind of I wanted to see who they were and and write it very specifically for them and the you know the impressions I got from the musicians from the band but also from the whole uh, you know the area is way up high up in in Sweden and mm. nature is different and the climate is different and stuff so I kind of wanted it to you know get take something or let me inspire. Um, myself would be inspired by by what they uh, showed me. Also, mm, okay. uh, yeah, it was unique. It was it was really great. I'm super happy and really yeah. great. Yeah, and, and also, um, I see you're originally from Denmark, uh, yes. but you've also been in in the United States for a number of years. Yeah. So, uh, and you did some big band music there as well, or? I actually didn't in uh, New York. Oh, you didn't? No. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I played a lot of, of other groups. I did, some, I did a little bit of classical, actually. Yes, yes, I was going to ask you about that. So, so. Yeah. Wow, so, so um, I mean, in New York you were just doing, what, smaller smaller groups and stuff like that? Right. So, did, well, I mean, were you, um, did you always have this, how would I put it? This feeling to do big band music, or did that just come out of the blue then, the Norbotten mm. sort of invitation? Yeah, maybe. Well, I mean, I've, I've written for slightly larger groups than just quartet and quintet, you know, mm. maybe 9, 10, 11 musicians. Uh, so, so not completely out of the blue in that way. Yeah. But, but that's the first time that I worked with a, a big band. And I, I had written maybe one big fan chart before, uh, before, yeah. Um, but so yeah, it, it's it was the start, uh, <laughs> send off, send off somehow. <laughs> well, that's amazing. I mean, big bad 
music just sounds amazing, especially when performed well. You know, especially on on record and when you see a big band live, it's really nice to see. So yeah, um, I want to ask you about the New York connection, so to speak. So I mean, how did you did you study sort of music in New York? How did you end up in New York from from Denmark? Yeah, yeah I was, um, you know, I, I was originally I played classical piano at the conservatory in Denmark. I, I left after a few years and switched direction to bass and and, you know, uh, jazz music. And and in my last year at the conservatory of the, in Denmark we call it the Rhythmic Conservatory, um, uh, and then uh, last year I, I went to study in New York as an exchange student. And okay. it so happened that I, I couldn't leave when I, you know, after I came back. You couldn't I, leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of it. <laughs> yeah, I understand what you mean. Right, right. Um, so I actually I had to stop my studies in Denmark, and then I ended up finishing wow. uh, doing a bachelor of fine arts at the New School in New York, mm-hmm. and then I just stayed afterwards as well, um, hung out and played and worked freelance uh, with people in New York and toured a bit here and there and stuff, and started building. That's also you know, right around when I finished the, the school there, that's, that's where I started building my own groups. Hmm. Um, yes, yeah, so you said you switched from piano to bass, but yeah. that sounds like a quite a late stage to, to make the switch. Yeah, I think, you know, I had played a little bit of electric bass since I was in high school or oh. something. Um, and before that, I played a little bit of guitar, you know. So, but but it's true. I mean, I think I was in my early twenties when I sort of made that final decision and said, "Hey, now my main instrument is bass, and it's actually upright bass." So, so I did, you know, it, it, I did have to grow muscles <laughs> in a few years to be strong enough and get the technique and all that stuff. So. Uh, so yeah, it, it's rather late, maybe. Yeah, the listeners won't see us, but my jaw just dropped when you say you switched in your twenties. Wow, yeah. I can't believe what I'm hearing. <laughs> Good grief! Well, <laughs> e- excellent. Are you all right? <laughs> yes, I'm fine. I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> no, just it's uh, it's amazing. Um, I mean, uh, you play it so well, so. You know, or you, when you expect to hear someone say, oh yes, you know, I started off when I was six and you know, started yeah. taking a list. Wow, incredible. But, I mean, my sort of philosophy is that everything you do, you you, you know, you learn something from everything you do, you know, and, and music is still music, uh, regardless of what it is. So, and your ears are developing and growing and you sort of, your whole musicianship. So, yeah. it was, I think it's mainly... And, and if you've listened to a lot of jazz or whatever style it is that you're switching into, then it's also an easier switch. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But of course, I mean, of course I've practiced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did um, interview Mark Egan last month, actually, with Danny Gottlieb, and that was a really nice interview that I did. And... Um, he was saying that he actually started off playing trumpet yeah. and uh, he switched to bass, I think, as a teenager. But I, I am aware that there's lo- loads of musicians who have started off in one instrument and end up being a profession in another instrument. So, yeah, I, yeah, I get that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, and this is, you probably said that too, but it's, you know, I think there's a, you feel it as when you mm. get to the right instrument. Yeah. You know, response. Uh, or somehow to your personality or that's speaks to you in a certain way I think that's great and uh, do you um, do you still play the electric bass from time to time or do you just really just stick to to the big one yeah very rarely very, okay. very very rarely yeah so but I, th- and there's you know there's certain if I I love Brazilian music and if I am in a situation or I come in a situation where I, I play that I would play it on the electric bass for sure, oh. um, but that, that hadn't happened in a long time. So. 
Okay. <laughs> I remember I saw Dave Holland years ago with um, Jack Dijonet, and mm. um, he played he played electric bass on one track, right. which he again he hardly ever ever plays electric bass on. <clears throat> so that was nice to see. It was a Fender. Yeah. Okay. So um, that's great. Um, I just wanted to touch on like the current state of the situation because um, you, you're in Berlin now and obviously we've got this huge pandemic so I just wanted to ask you what is the state of the music scene right now in Berlin as we speak? Well it is kind of slowly uh, coming like reopening a little bit with the very limited amount of people in the audience and, and there's still uh, live streams mm. uh, as there are, as are everywhere else. Um, what I mean, and then you see people playing outside, which is nice. Okay. And, I mean, I think the whole outside life uh, has gotten a boost. Yeah. <laughs> I played some uh, rooftop concerts, which has been fun also. Mm. Um, so and and I I know the I was just contacted by by a German radio from Bremen, they're doing sort of a concert series as to, to you know, sort of getting things, help, uh, hoping to get help uh, the, the venues getting started again and, and uh, so they are cooperating with some venues promoting stuff through the radio as well, which is very nice uh, that they do that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it's, you, we'll see, um, but it's it's very controlled here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I, I hope. I mean, live is definitely another. Uh, it's very important for the music. Yeah. Um, that it happens live, uh, and and being hearing it is you know in, on a online is good and everything, and you can get a lot of experience that way. But it's not the same as standing in a room or yeah being together that way. Yeah, I mean, are you quite hopeful that next year the situation will improve? Yeah, I mean, that all depends on the science and medical stuff, I, I guess. Um, but yeah, I hope so. I, I mean, like, when we get to next summer, I would hope that things are pretty normal again. Hmm. Or a new normal, as they, as they say, as they say now. Yeah, yeah who knows? I, 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 can't, I, don't, I don't really dare predict anything. No. I can tell you that I'm, I'm not actively booking a whole lot of stuff because uh, it, it, both it's hard, it's extra hard now, uh, and, and nobody really dares. Uh, so, so we'll just have to do what we can in while we wait. Yeah, no, it's a good way to put it. Uh, and then usually I would ask, you know, if you've got any plans to to come to Britain but obviously there's no point asking that <laughs> so well, but hopefully in the future you right. know that that will yeah. be the case right okay right so um, I just want to say thanks for this um, interview of us today Jazz on the Radio and really enjoy playing your CD on the station and we'll continue to do that so thanks thanks for the interview thank you very much and uh, really appreciate that you're taking the time and, and also playing my music and it was fun but I had a good time talking ok thank you cheers cheers
The JLR Interview Series.